Hi, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a DB board with two neutral rails. Sometimes it's useful to have a separate neutral rail. This helps with nuisance tripping. And over here, I have a lab set up. In this installation, I'll be using the Samite rail. The circuit breakers look like this. You might also use a DIN rail, and then you'll follow the same principles. I have a stove isolator switch. I have a plug circuit and on the side there I have a light switch with the associated light. Now in this setup I'm going to have the plug protected by earth leakage. So the plug is going to be on the one side of the DB board but I'm going to make the stove or maybe this is the geyser and I'm going to have this on the other side which is only going to have short circuit and overload protection but it won't be protected by earth leakage. Sometimes people also connect lights before earth leakage now it's very important that you consult your local standards. The purpose of this video is just to demonstrate how you can separate the neutrals. So these cables over here are for my stove which is connected to the isolator over here. I then have another set of leads which is connected to my plug and then I have a light circuit over here. I'm going to wire them into this DB board and show you step by step how I do this. Right, I'm going to now install my circuit breakers. Right, this is the first circuit breaker without earth leakage. I'm now connecting my 30 amp circuit breaker for my stove. In this layout, I'm going to be using a 10 amp circuit breaker for a light circuit. I now have my earth leakage. Right, I have two plug circuits here, but I'm only going to be using one because I only have one plug outlet in this lab setup. I'm now going to install my second neutral rail. Here's a neutral rail and there's a neutral rail. I'm now going to loosen all the screws. Right, I'm now going to connect the supply lines to the first circuit breaker. Make sure this is disconnected from the upstream supply. I'm quickly checking to see that it is off and I'm measuring zero volts, so it is off. Right, my supply is coming in here, the neutral and the live. Now the output of this circuit breaker is sitting at the bottom. So I'm going to take the neutral and connect it to the neutral rail at the top. Now I need to connect the live to these circuit breakers over here. Right, so the live is coming in there through the circuit breaker, coming out there, now it is feeding into this first circuit breaker. Right, so this circuit breaker and this circuit breaker are both going to be fed from this wire over here. We also need to supply the earth leakage circuit breaker because that is going to be feeding these loads over here. So that means that this point this point and this point can all be connected together. I've now used a bus bar, which is now shorting out that terminal, that terminal, and that terminal. Right, now the earth leakage now has the live connected over there, but what we also need is to give it the neutral. So I'm now going to put a neutral wire from there to this neutral rail at the top. That means I'm now joining this neutral to the output of this circuit breaker's neutral. Right, now this earth leakage has its incoming live and the neutral. The neutral is coming from there, which is the same wire coming all the way from here. Now we need to connect the live and the neutral from the output of this earth leakage. Now the loads that are protected by earth leakage are sitting over here. So we need to give these circuit breakers the live connection. Right, so I need to connect to the live terminal of this earth leakage, which is this terminal over here. And this live is now going to feed the circuits which are protected by earth leakage. So I now bring it round to the top of these circuit breakers. Right, now I just need to connect the neutral for this side of the DB board. This is going to be the side that is protected by earth leakage. So it's now going to have its own neutral rail. So I'm going to go from the neutral terminal of the earth leakage to this neutral rail over here, which is going to now be separate from that neutral rail over there. Right, now we've connected the live and the neutral to this circuit breaker. The output is fed around here. The live is now feeding these two loads. And there's an additional live which is now feeding this circuit breaker over here. The output of this earth leakage is now feeding these loads over here. Now I'll also need to give this circuit breaker a live voltage. I recommend you use a bus bar to add connectivity to the top rail of the circuit breakers. Some people just use a jumper that looks like this, connecting this circuit breaker to that. Please be careful when you are doing this because the current rating of this wire needs to be higher than the circuit breaker. For example, if this is a 20 amp circuit breaker, this wire here should be at least 20 amps. 
Where the problem comes in is at a later stage, if you expand the DB board and add another circuit breaker here and add another jumper, the current rating of this wire is not enough for 30 amps. Therefore, it's best to use bus bars when adding additional loads. But for the purpose of this setup, I'm just using the jumper, which means that once I energize this board, lift this circuit breaker and lift this circuit breaker, I'll now have live on both of these inputs to these circuit breakers. Now all the circuit breakers are connected except for the output loads. So all I need to do now is wire up each one of the loads. Now the first load I'm going to wire up is the stove. In this case we said that the stove is not going to be protected by earth leakage, which means that it's going to be on this side of the earth leakage. So I'm first going to wire the live to the output of the circuit breaker. This is a 30 amp circuit breaker and this is going to be feeding the stove. Now these cables are flexible for the purposes of reuse in this lab. In your case, you will most probably have solid core cables. Now in your home or office, you should have an earth cable connected to your plumbing and possibly an earth spike outside in the ground to make sure you have good earthing. So you must connect that wire to this earth rail over here. So say for example there was an earth cable there, well it would be connected to the earth rail at the bottom here. Now all the earths are connected to the same earth point. Even though the circuits are going to be split, the earths are still common. Right, so the live is now connected to the 30 amp circuit breaker. The neutral, however, needs to be connected to this neutral rail at the top. The reason why this neutral needs to be connected to this rail over here is because I'm not protecting the stove with earth leakage. So that means it must be before the earth leakage. Right, so the stove circuit is now connected. The live is going to be fed via this 30 amp circuit breaker. The neutral is running all the way to the top to the same neutral that is this wire over here. Now I'm going to connect the light circuit which won't be protected by earth leakage. So this is my light circuit over here. Right, I've now connected the earth for my lighting circuit to the common earth rail over here. And the live for the light is connected to the output of the circuit breaker. There I'm showing the output. This is only a 10 amp circuit breaker. But now the neutral for this also needs to be connected to this top neutral rail because it is before earth leakage. Now my final circuit is my plug circuit, which is the circuit that I want to have earth leakage protection. So I'm first going to just connect my earth to the same common earth rail over here. Right, I've connected the earth to the earth rail. Now I need to connect the live to the output of this 20 amp circuit breaker. This is going to be protected by earth leakage. Now this is my plug circuit and this is the neutral for that plug circuit. Now this particular neutral is the one that's going to be connected to this neutral rail. Right, so the plugs live is now connected to this neutral rail, which is the same neutral rail connected to the output of the earth leakage. Now I apologize for these wires looking so messy. It's just because we use flexible wires so we can keep reusing it in the lab. I'm now going to explain the whole setup. These two wires over here feeds this DB board. At the moment, there's no power connected. If I switch on the power at the feeder DB board, the DB board that is feeding this one, I first have to lift this circuit breaker in order to get voltage present over here. Once I lift the circuit breaker, what will happen is I will then have a voltage sitting here. That means that in order for me to switch on my stove circuit, I can now lift up that circuit breaker and my stove circuit would be connected. If I wanted to connect my light circuit, I could lift that circuit breaker. Now the minute this is lifted, this circuit breaker also gets a voltage sitting over here because I'm showing that this is connected via a bus bar. Notice this bus bar is the same wire which is coming from the output of the circuit breaker. So when I close the circuit breaker, I'm now connecting this earth leakage to the line voltage. Now in order for me to switch on my plug circuit, I first have to lift my earth leakage circuit breaker, which will now allow this plug circuit to have a voltage sitting at the input of the circuit breaker. In order for me to energize my plug circuit, I must lift that circuit breaker. So my plug circuit would now be energized. If I drop my earth leakage, no change will happen to my stove or light circuit because the earth leakage is only for these two plug circuits. So now when I've dropped the earth leakage, my plug circuit no longer works. If I lift my earth leakage up, all of my loads would now be energized. But if I drop this circuit breaker, 
everything after the circuit breaker is now off. That means that even my plug circuit is now off. I'm going to quickly do some continuity measurements. Continuity means you are checking if there is a very low impedance path or a short circuit between the leads. Listen to the buzzer sound. The zero is displayed on the meter and that buzzing sound tells me it's a short circuit. The distribution board is currently off. There is no power being fed into this DB board. I've put my lead on the live of this circuit breaker. Notice when I put my other lead on the output, there is an open circuit. Only when I lift the circuit breaker do I have a short circuit. Right, so now I've lifted the circuit breaker. That means that this row over here is now also connected to this incoming live over here. There you can see there and then the live for the earth leakage. If I drop the circuit breaker, you see that I've now disconnected the continuity between there and there. If I put my lead to the output of my plug circuit, notice that there's only connectivity when I lift that circuit breaker. If I drop the earth leakage, notice that the plug circuit becomes disconnected. If I lift my earth leakage and I drop the plug circuit breaker, it will still disconnect that load. If all the circuit breakers are up, but I only drop this one, notice that the plug circuit is still disconnected. Right, now I've lifted the circuit breaker up. Notice that the stove circuit and the light circuit is connected. Even if I drop the earth leakage, notice that the light circuit and the stove circuit is still connected. Now before you energize the distribution board, just go once more and just tighten all the screws. Now I can put the cover on. Now it's important to cover that hole. You can either use blanks like that, or you can cut out plastic and stick it at the back of the cover. Now you can add your labeling. For example, plugs was there, your local switch, your warning labels. And in this case, this was lights and this was going to be the stove. Right, now I've switched on the DB board which is feeding this DB board and now when I lift the circuit breaker, I can now switch on the light. There you can see the light going on in the top right corner of the video. Right, so the light is now energized, therefore if I switch on and off my light, you can see the light is now working even though the earth leakage is still off. The plug circuit is still off. If I want the plug to be on, I need to lift up the earth leakage, lift up the plug circuit, make sure that it's on, and there's the little light for my soldering iron. So my plug circuit is now activated. Now notice when I trip this earth leakage and switch off the plug circuit, notice that the light remains on because that is still connected. If I drop this circuit breaker, notice that everything switches off. Now, if this plug circuit had to trip, maybe somebody touched the neutral onto the earth, it will drop that earth leakage, but the light and the geyser will remain on. Right, that is how you wire a DB board with two neutrals. Thanks for watching and cheers.